Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Um, just come to give you a word today from the Lord. Amen. I want to give you a word that the Lord gave to me today. Amen. And this word is focused on, you gotta understand, it's two worlds right now. The earth that we are living in. And you gotta understand that you are in one. Did you know that? It's either you are of the world, which strives sinners, those who are not saved. Or it's you in the kingdom of God. And you are living free from all sin, which makes you saved, which means to be delivered from sin. Amen. So there are two different worlds that we are in today. And we either of the world or we in the kingdom of God. We are not in both. You have to understand that. There's no way you can be both. You are one. You're in one of them. Amen. And today I want to speak to you about this subject. Amen. As the Lord gives me the grace to minister this word unto you today. Amen. If you have your Bible, get your Bible. Amen. I want you to see this for your own eyes. Amen. Uh, turn to 2 Peter chapter 1 verse number four amen first peter i'm sorry second peter chapter one verse four amen the bible reads it says wherefore are given unto us a seed in great and precious promises it says that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature Amen. Then it says, having escaped the corruptions, take a listen to that now, the corruptions, amen, that is in the world through lust. You understand that it's corruption that's in this world through the lust, amen, which is things, the evil desires. Lust means evil desires, amen. So you got to understand the only thing that's in the world is, is the lust of the flesh. You know, it's evil, amen. And nothing but sin that desires. When you're living in the world, you are living in sin. You got to understand that. It's nothing in the world that's pure, amen. But only thing that desires and that lives in the world is sin. So if you are living in the world, amen, and that's why you are living accustomed to the ways of the world. You are living in sin, amen. You go by what the world say, you know, you go by what people do now, amen. You don't do what the Bible says. It's all about what the people do, amen. Now let's go to 1 John chapter 2. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, start with verse 15. You know, I'm starting out with some basic things. It's trying to get you to understand what the world is. Amen. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. And it reads, it says, love not the world. Amen. So once again, he's telling us to love not the world. Amen. Because we, now we understand that in the world, it's nothing but lust, nothing but sin, nothing but evil. That's why we can't love it. Because if we love it, then we'll become evil and sinful and start to do the things that's in the world. That's why we can't love the world when you are truly a child of God. But let me stick to this subject, amen. It say, love not the world. It say, neither the things that are in the world. Did you see that? The things of in this world, it is evil. Amen. So we, that's why we can't love it. Because we love it, then we'll start to go in the world and do what the world does. And then it says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, you have to understand, the Bible said that if anybody love the world, that mean the thing that's in this world. Love doing what it said. Love watching the stuff the world presents. You know, love listening to what the world listens to. Love doing the things and the trends that the world creates and they just follow and just do it. You know, because it looks pleasing to the eyes and it just, you know, uh, they just want to do it. But you understand that if you love in the world, that's why you are of the world. Because you are doing what the world wants you to do. You are doing what the world does and not what God's word said. And that's why you are of the world. That's how you become of the world. Check this out, verse 16. He said, for all that is in the world, this is what's in the world. He says... The lust of the flesh, I mean, you know, doing what, doing what your flesh wants you to do, you know, going out to clubs, you know, partying, you know, uh, 
becoming a porn star, you know, worrying about cars, money, all these things that the world offers and presents, which is on the scene. Amen. Then it says, and the lust of the eyes. And then it says, in the pride of life. That's all that's in the world. It says, he said, it's not of the Father. He let you know that that's not of the Father. That's not of God. Amen. He said, but of, but it's of the world. So you got to understand that the only thing that the wells in the world is evil desire. is sin. That's all what desires in the world. Now let's go right here to Galatians chapter 5. Amen. I just want to give you a brief summary just describing what the world is so you can know exactly what I'm talking about. Because this is a spiritual. You can't understand this Bible in your physical, in your fleshly wisdom. Amen. This has to be understood by the power of the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to break it down until you to get this revelation so you can understand. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. Now, this is going to strive if you are of the world. If you fit some of these scriptures and what I'm about to read, if it hits you and you know it is for you, it lets you know that you're in the world. Let's go right here to Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. I'm sorry. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, start with verse 16. It says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, meaning opposite. It says, The one to the other. He said, So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Verse 18, But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. So, verse 19 going to strive the people that's of the world. It's basically striving the world. Verse 19, he said, For the works of the flesh are manifest. So, this is how you know that you're in sin, that you're walking in your flesh, that you're of the world. Amen. It says, Which are these? Adultery. Mm -hmm. So, if you are married and you or having sexual intercourse with someone else besides your spouse, you are committing adultery. You commit adultery not also by just physically doing it with somebody. The Bible says if you even to look at someone and begin to love, sort of think about having sex with them, you already committed adultery from your heart. Did you know that? So if you even do that, you already committed adultery. So we know if you are committing adultery, you are of the world. You are a sinner. Verse, then it says fornication. This is called having sex without being married. So if you right now, call yourself having a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you want to call it. Because according to the Bible, you are single. You either single or you married. That's why they have them papers out. They don't say you got a boyfriend and girlfriend. They either say, are you single or are you married? Because according to the Bible, they don't have boyfriends and girlfriends. It says you single or you married. Sex is designed for marriage only. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I just feel it right now. You got to understand that so if you are having sex without being married, because sex was designed for people just to, just to have it. It only designed for married people. Now, if you could have sex without being married, that's why you become a fornicator. That's what a fornicator is. They having sex without being married. If you are doing that, you um you you committing fornication. You are a fornicator. You are of the world. Then it say uncleanness, uh, which simply means that which is polluted. With something to pollute, that means it got filth in it. You like a water body. If a water body not clean. And they got dirt in it, then it's polluted. So if you got sin in you, thank you, Holy Ghost. If you got sin in you, then you become polluted. Thank you, Lord. So you are unclean. You are a sinner. You are of the world. Verse 20. Adultery. Which means the worship of idols. You gotta realize you people can worship money. It's whatever you give respect and reverence to, that becomes your God. So if you're not on, if you're not just worshiping God and only Him, then me worshiping the idol. It could be money. You wake up, get my cake up. It's all about money. That's your idol. 
you reverence money so much, respect it so much, and desire to go after that become your God. That's who you live to please and serve. Or it could be a person or object. If you love an oppressor, why just love press so much? I have people saying this all the time that uh Michael Jordan and you know all these farming people uh Billy Boosie, you know, all the people, they my idols. Did you hear what you just said? You saying that's your idol. That's who you worship. Beyonce. She make it a song, bow down with the B word. You know, y'all know the song. You know, y'all of the world. You know, the, the world know all these trains, these new slaves y'all be having. But you got to understand that if you respect them, I love that my idol, that's your God. That's who you serving. Did you know that? So if you're doing that, and you love stuff so much, whether it's an object, person, or a thing, then you uh, worship a idol. You got to understand that whether it's a Buddha statue or whatever. Then it goes to witchcraft, which simply means a person that uses magic. If you are using magic, then you're in witchcraft. Then, the Bible also said this. I wasn't going to go to it, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get on it to God because, you know, he just gave me this word right here. Hey, Amen. It tied all up because my time is running short, so let me get to it. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. I'm going to briefly read through these to break them down. 15 verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23. He said, For rebellion, so this is striving another way of witchcraft. You know, witchcraft just not the fact of using sorcery, but also this. Check this out. He said, For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Uh oh. So if you rebelling against God, me going against his word, he said, Not me. Read your Bible. For rebellion is a sin. So you know it's a sin of witchcraft. And you rebelling against God and you one who's saying that you know where well, I know I'm living wrong. I just ain't really living right. It's because you rebelling against God. And that's witchcraft. You are under witchcraft. That's what the Bible said. He said in stubbornness is iniquity and adultery. Even if you've been stubborn, can I tell you nothing about God? You just doing your thing, it don't matter. That's a form of adultery also. It makes you a sinner. Amen. And God, if you look around the church, you got a lot of witches because they in church but still rebelling against God. They're not obeying the truth. They're just going to church but still don't want to obey the word you presented to them. They on a witchcraft. Thank you, Lord. Now, variance. Variance means the fact or state of being in disagreement or arguing or fussing. So, if you somebody... Who when you can't talk to somebody and y'all disagree with something and all of a sudden that you mad and you want to argue and next thing you know you start fighting, cussing, whatever you want to do with them, that's called variance. That's a sin of the flesh. It makes you of the world. He says, then it go to emulations. It says to strive to equal or excel, which means to pass. So if you somebody who striving to be Better than somebody or to get equal to them. So you say, so look at somebody else's life. Oh, I want to be just like them. Oh, I want to be better than them. Oh, man, I'm trying to be better how my mama was. I'm trying to be, man, you don't possibly try to be better than nobody or be equal to. But you be satisfied for who you is with your life and whatever God get, he give you. You can't focus on what nobody else got. But the Bible called that emulation. That's somebody that's a sin of the world. Then we got envying. I mean, I'm sorry, then we got wrath. After that was wrath. Wrath means punishment or vengeance as a manifest of anger. So in order to get wrath, you first have to be already angry with somebody. And when you come angry with somebody, that's how somebody can get go kill somebody. Because for number one, they already was angry with them. So now they angry with them. Now they can go ahead and kill them. Because it was already mad to them and it just built up and became wrath. And now you want to take vengeance on somebody to basically, what the world called it, to get back at somebody. That's called wrath. That's of the world in the scene. Then we got strife. It's, it's anger or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues of conflict. So, you 
once again talking to somebody, then you become angry and bitter. You start cussing all this stuff over a little issue you got, a little problem you had. Next thing you know, you causing disagree. You want to go to their job or threaten them and say, I'm going to beat them or do this, this. That's strife. You want to fight and all this stuff and kill them what you want to do. That's called strife. That's of the flesh. Then we got seditious, which means attack upon the established government. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna go ahead and go right here. Got time running short my video. I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. Then we got heresies. That means a teaching contrary to the truth. Plain and simple. If you, the Bible says, I'm gonna give you a perfect example because this is the famous one that the people just don't like. The word don't like it. Even people who call themselves Christians don't like it. Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 they says to be perfect for God is perfect. So the fact is when people hear that if you are somebody who's saying can't nobody be perfect and we all have to sin. When the Bible says to be perfect you know that that's a heresy that you preach. I mean it's a false doctrine. It's something that goes against what the word says. Something that the word never said. That's called a heresy. It was a false teaching. So you somebody who walk around say everybody have to sin when the Bible never said this. That's a heresy. Well, I don't care. You're the preacher. You're a bishop. If you that, yes, you're a false prophet. You're a devil. The truth ain't in you. And you preaching heresies. you a devil. You're going to burn in hell because that's lying. And lies can't in the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Then it says, um, envying. You know. It says, envying means to a resentment against another success or desire to have a a quality of possession or a desire or attribute belonging to someone else. Basically, you desire to have something. You see somebody with this nice stuff and you desire to have what they have. That's why people go in and steal and stuff. They don't want to go work. The Bible said work with your own hands. You know, mind your own business. But people want to envy and want to get what other people want. That's why you see people getting robbed, people getting killed because they get killed over something that belongs to them because somebody else wanted what they had. That's called envy. You don't go to hell if you repent. Murderers, if you kill somebody. And the Bible says to even hate somebody is considered murder. If you hate somebody, that's a form of murder. And if you don't believe me, uh, go to it for yourself. I don't have time right now. The first John chapter 3, verse 15, it'll tell you that if you hate your brother, that's a co considered murder. You don't go to hell too. Drunkenness, which means to be intoxicated, which means you drunk. You done lost your senses. You know, you got blurred vision. You are drunk. Then it says, reveling. We got reveling, which means people are sitting here and they're going to clubs and parties and all these things. With all this loud music and stuff and all this stuff. That's what reveling called. Look the definition up yourself. You'll see. And then the Bible says simply, he said, Reveling and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do these things should not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you are doing those things, it ain't just that. Whether you're homosexual, whether you're lying, whether you're a thief, or whatever, you understand that you are a sinner and you are of the world. The world is people who go against God's word, who not living against God's word. So you living against God's word and make you a sinner. You are of the world. You walk into your flesh, your evil desires. Now I want to talk to you about who in the kingdom of God. You understand? It's a requirement to enter God's kingdom. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and briefly go through this. First of all, to enter God's kingdom, a lot of people haven't entered God's kingdom first off and foremost. And I want to break this down to you to see if you're in God's kingdom. According to what the Bible says and not what men say. Because you're in God's kingdom, neither will you be saved. John chapter 3, verse 5 says, Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter God's kingdom. So, to enter on God's kingdom, you have to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Okay? The word is talking about water baptism. When you die to your flesh, the spirit is talking about the Holy Ghost. Now let's see where God's kingdom at. I'm about to show you where God's kingdom at. 
So first of all, you got to be born again in God's kingdom. So once you got baptized in Jesus' name, Acts chapter 2, verse 30 says, Repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the mission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That when a person first want to enter God's kingdom, you have to do that first. If you have not yet got baptized in water, have received the Holy Ghost, you have it in God's kingdom. You might say, oh, well, that's not true. My pastor told me when I got baptized in water, the spirit dwell in me. Now, if you receive the Holy Ghost according to the Bible, you ain't got you ain't in the kingdom of God. Look at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. If you don't believe, it says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But so it's describing what the kingdom of God is. Look closely. He said, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we see that the kingdom of God you, is righteousness. That means holy living. That means not living in sin. That means living free from sin by obeying the gospel. Then you're going to have some peace. And you're going to have some joy. And the Bible said it's in the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. So, brother, for you tell me the kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost, I'm not telling you. The Bible said that the kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are not in the kingdom of God. That means you're not even saved. So, if you still a fornicator, a homosexual, and say you're in the kingdom of God, we, we just read in the scriptures that it's a work of the flesh, you are lying. The truth ain't in you. In God's kingdom, you live holy. You don't live in sin in God's kingdom. God is not a sin for God. If you serve him, he said, be holy for I am holy. So if you serve him, you got to be holy like he holy. That means you got to be without sin. God don't have no sin in him. Those who serve him show not going to be in no sin. But they're going to be just like him. Holy for he is holy. And if you're not living holy, you're not in God's kingdom. So you first got to see the Holy Ghost. Followed by being baptized in water to end in God's kingdom. Then once you do that, you will be in this kingdom. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, For you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you. So you receive power after the Holy Ghost come, not before. That's why a lot of people walk in the church still sinning. They go to church. They hear the word and they leave the church the same because they have no power. And also because they pass don't know the truth. He ain't got the Holy Ghost. And the Bible can only be preached and understood through the Holy Ghost. So without the Holy Ghost, you will never understand the Bible and you won't have no power. And you will remain a sinner. You will never be able to live free from sin. That's why you can say, can anybody be perfect? That's why you believe, can anybody live free from sin? It's because you were spiritually blind. And you need the Holy Ghost to open your eyes up to give you power to learn this truth. And it's going to make you free. It's going to make you free. That's all the truth do. It's going to make you free. The truth don't keep you bound. What's keeping you bound is lies. Because you want to believe that you can't be perfect. You have to keep on sinning. So what you do, you keep sinning. Because you've been lied to. You've been seduced by a doctor and the devil. So we see that those who are in the kingdom of God must be born again. Those that have been baptized in water, they die to their flesh. They die to their sin. For the Bible says, he that is dead is free from sin. When a person dead, they can't do nothing no more what they was doing. So when you when you actually die to your flesh, you die to your sinful nature, to your sins. And you rise up a new creature in Christ. Father by getting baptized with the Holy Ghost, which will keep you from sin, which will give you power to obey God. It'll give you power to overcome your flesh. Because without it, your flesh will overcome you. That's why you need the power of the Holy Ghost to overcome the power of this flesh. And I'm going to close with this. 1 John chapter 3. This shows the people who are truly saved, which are those who are in the kingdom of God. You, can, you can't live holy until you're in God's kingdom by getting baptized in water and receive the Holy Ghost. You first got to do that before you can consider even trying to live for God. Because you can't live for Him truly until you get born again and in God's kingdom by receiving the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 9, Whoever is born in God don't commit sin. Whoever has truly been born in God, been saved by being born again, by getting baptized in water in the Holy Ghost, those are the ones who the Holy Ghost taught the truth and led them God, as the Bible said, and it brings the word to their remembrance to keep them refreshed in God's word, keeping God's word in their mind so they won't sin. Those are the ones who don't commit sin because they know their word and they obey the truth and they know it through the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost gives them power to resist their flesh when their flesh want to act up. Then it says, for his seed remaining in him, and he cannot sin because he is born in God. The reason why the person that's truly saved can't sin 
It's because God's seed is in him. This word has truly been founded in their heart. And they obeying this word, every word that proceed out God's mouth. They being perfect, they being holy, they believe it all. And that's why they're free from sin today because the Bible says you got to repent and believe this God. You just can't repent, but you got to believe this. Once you believe this, you're going to stop trying to take out what it says or what, it, what you think it meant. Now nah, you're going to believe for what it says and then you're going to know the truth. You're going to learn it and it's going to make you free from sin. So now you know that you're in one of these worlds. you either of the world or you're in the kingdom of God. According to the scriptures, and you are a sinner, you still in sin, you have been baptized in water, received the Holy Ghost, you are of the world. If you got baptized in water, you haven't received the Holy Ghost, the Bible said the kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost. So if you got the Holy Ghost, you're not in God's kingdom. That's why you can't live holy and you keep seeing it. That's why you're doing it now. But those who are in the, um, Christ's kingdom, in the kingdom of God, those who not commit sin, could have been born again. Of the warden of the spirit. And those are the ones who live free from sin. And can't commit sin. Because God's seed remains in them. If you want to be saved. Do as Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says. Repent and be baptized in Jesus name. And receive the Holy Ghost. And then you'll be in Christ's kingdom. Then you have power. The Holy Ghost will teach you this word. And you'll get away from all these lies. Your eyes are open. And you should know the truth. And according to the Bible, it shall make you free. And it's going to make you free indeed. That means you're going to be free without a doubt. You ain't going to have to go back. You ain't going to desire to do those evil, sinful things that your flesh wanted you to do. Because the Holy Ghost is going to give you power. And you better to live this life. So remember, if you're in the world, if you stay in the world, you're going to burn in hell. For the Bible says, whoever sow in the flesh is going to reap corruption. Whoever sow in the spirit, everlasting life. If you, live, if you die in your flesh in the world, you're going to go to hell. That's why the Bible says repent and likewise perish. You got to repent for your sins to get baptized in Jesus' name and see the Holy Ghost. And you'll be in Christ's kingdom. And then you better live holy and free from sin. Then when you die, you'll be found innocent and without sin. And then you should have eternal life. Because no sinner will be saved but on the righteous, which are those who are living free from sin. In Jesus' name, amen.